you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. Now, today's Daily Dose of Stupid is one that is both infuriating and, weirdly enough, does make you contemplate things. I think that you're going to be infuriated first, but... Oh, oh, sorry, I had a flash there for a second, but... Anyway, I think that you're going to be infuriated first, but maybe you'll get a little... Uh, we'll try to go over the philosophical side of this in just a second. So here's a clip from CBS News of a bunch of college kids that went to spring break in Miami talking about that they really don't care about the coronavirus, and if they get it, they get it, and it's no big deal. So here they are. If I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. You know, I've been waiting. We've been waiting for Miami spring break for a while. About two months we've had this trip planned. Two, three months. So we're just out here having a good time. Whatever happens, happens. Like, it's really messing up with my spring break. What is there to do here other than go to the bars or the beach and they're closing all of it? It's really messing up. I think they're blowing it way out of proportion. I think it's doing way too much. Doing us bad. We need a refund. This virus ain't that serious. It's serious. It's more serious things out there like hunger and poverty, and we need to address yes, that. Yeah, I mean, we planned this a long time ago, and it was kind of up in the air if we still go, but, like, we're here. I just turned 21 this year, so I'm here to party, so it's kind of disappointing, but we're just making the most of it. We met these other people in our little Airbnb spot, so we're just hanging out with them and trying to get drunk before everything closes. I mean, it sucks, but... We're gonna make the best of it. We're enjoying ourselves. It sucks. And I'm from New Orleans, so this really sucks. However, we're gonna enjoy ourselves. We having day parties all day. It's my birthday, St. Patrick's Day. Turn up. We're just trying to roll with the boy. We're just living for the moment. We're just going for, we're just gonna do what happens, when it happens. When stuff closes, we're gonna do it when it closes. But uh, uh, besides that, we're just trying to have the best trip we can. So, this is the height of being a self-absorbed, selfish, uh, words I can't even say on the radio and shouldn't ever say. I mean, the level of selfishness just jumps out of the screen at you. Bunch of drunk colleges, oh, well, you know, if we get corona, it's just whatever. I mean, yeah, people could die from it, but it's not our problem, you know, where it's not going to stop us from partying. Woo! Like, this is what these people are. Gen Zers, if you wonder why boomers don't take you seriously, that's why. That's why they don't take you seriously. Because there are people like that roaming around, and that's what they tend to see. Now, I know that all of you are not like that. In fact, I know some very responsible young men and women in that generation. My brother among them. He, he even stayed home last weekend because he was worried about the coronavirus. He's taking this really seriously. I know a lot of young men and women that I work with that are in that age group, that are college students, that don't act like that. But there was an awful lot of people there that did. And sadly, this is probably not an all too uncommon attitude. I know that it's certainly prevalent on the internet. I would say it's still a minority of the generation, but there is a significant enough number of it that unfortunately people get the wrong idea in their head that everybody is kind of like that because Ultimately, we're supposed to look out for each other. Ultimately, what we're supposed to do is have one another's back. And yeah, maybe it has a low fatality rate, not a non-existent fatality rate, but a low fatality rate amongst young people. But it has a much higher one with older people, and you're going to come in contact either with an older person or somebody that is going to come in contact with an older person, which is the reason that you should be self-conscious of that and take preventative measures and responsibilities. You don't take the attitude of, oh yeah, screw the old people. I'm going to get out here and party. I've had this trip planned for months. Woo! Do you not hear yourself? Do you not think about how your actions and bad decisions harm other people? This is as irresponsible as a drunk driver. Now, I'm not saying that it's, you know, an exact moral equivalency, because even I could make an argument of how it's not an exact moral equivalency, because you're taking an action that may be irresponsible versus one that absolutely is. But with this, I, I just do not understand 
the mentality of somebody that is so callous towards his fellow man that he doesn't care if he's doing something that may very well end up in a loss of life. Because the truth is, every single one of these young people have parents and grandparents. Grandparents and who are probably closer to the age where this thing could really hurt them. And I imagine if the tables were turned. I imagine that if they were faced with a similar situation, let's say the virus were worked in reverse and it had a high fatality for younger people, but it didn't really affect older people as much. I have a feeling that the vast, vast, overwhelming majority of their grandparents would do the opposite of what these idiots are doing. They would have taken precautions, maybe even not so much for their self, but because they're worried about other people in society, some of whom they are family with and some of whom they may never meet in their lives and never come across again, doesn't matter. That's the kind of person that a lot of the people in that generation are. And the fact that they don't see it that way and that they don't care who they hurt with this, that, I mean, just really gets under your skin. But ultimately, you do have to remember because I don't want to paint all Gen Zers like this, that this is a really bad sample. Because you say, well, why didn't they have any videos of some of the more responsible people? Well, the responsible kids aren't down there. That's the thing. They specifically went to a place where you're only going to see the irresponsible kids because a responsible person wouldn't have gone there. I had a number of my students, unfortunately, that continued to go on spring break despite the fact all this was going on. And I told them that that was dumb, but... A bunch of them went anyway. Look, I get that it's inconvenient. I get that it sucks. There were a lot of things that I had planned to do in the near future. I'm probably not going to get to go to a baseball game that I had planned two or three months ago with my friends because of this thing. But that's the way that it goes. Sometimes these things, even if the baseball game were still going, if this thing were happening at a point where this thing was still prevalent, I would have to opt out because I do care about other people and want to take measures that ensure their safety. You know, I had a frat brother, speaking of college, I had a frat brother ask me a really, really insightful question, and this is the more philosophical side of it that I was talking about. And he asked, and this is a direct quote, how does the non-aggression principle apply to this situation? Well, this is a fantastic question, and for those of you that are unaware, the non-aggression principle is essentially a libertarian Esque idea, something that is held by a lot of conservatives in this country, that essentially, as long as you are not doing something that is aggressively harming another person, then it should be legally permissible. And this is one that kind of gets into a gray area. In fact, there are disagreements amongst even libertarians and libertarian leaning conservatives on this issue. There are essentially two schools of thought. The first school of thought is this this is so incredibly reckless that it actually constitutes an act of aggression. So basically, it comes down to the legal standard of criminal negligence, that just like it would be criminally negligent for you to leave a whole bunch of water on a floor and not warn anybody when you know that there are going to be people coming in that could hurt themselves, something to that extent, or something that is like an example that I just gave, driving while drunk. Well, that's something that is very likely to end in a fatality or bodily harm to someone. And because it is a activity that is so reckless, we actually criminalize it, even though you're not actually hurting anybody, there's such a high degree of risk that you could that we criminalize that activity. So I think that this does come dangerously close to that. I really do. But that's the first school of thought, and they would say that it absolutely does, and thus something like this ought to be banned, and this would, basically the threshold of aggression has been met, and therefore this would exceed the aggression needed on the non-aggression uh, principle. Now, the second school of thought, and this is the one that I actually belong to, again, before you start throwing things at your computer, this is a very unpopular show for me. <laughs> I've said that like three or four times in this one episode. Um, but before you start throwing things at your computer, this is my rationale. So the second school of thought is basically... Because this is an act of God, in other words, the beer doesn't enter your body by happenstance. Now, the beer did enter their body by happenstance, but I'm talking as a general principle. The virus doesn't enter your body by choice. See, when you're drinking and driving, 
you're the one that decided to get drunk. And then you're the decided, you're the one that decided to get behind the wheel. Now in this scenario, you're the one that decided to put yourself at risk of contracting the virus. That's different than actually knowingly consuming the virus and then specifically going around other people to infect them. Now that would be an act of criminal negligence. There's no argument from me or any other libertarian on that. But a lot of libertarians would say that because you are only potentially engaging in behavior that could end in contracting the virus and hurting another person, and you are not knowingly spreading it or knowingly doing something that you know for a fact is reckless, it's just potentially reckless, that there is a little bit of difference there. And because a virus, of course, is an act that is nobody's fault and nobody creates those circumstances intentionally, then it's something that it, that is a little bit different than actual criminal negligence. And because you don't know whether or not you are infecting people, the libertarian would say, let's err on the side of liberty. In other words, they're free to act recklessly as long as they are not knowingly doing something that could endanger somebody. And so because of that, we have to allow them the freedom to do so. However, they would also say that it is incumbent upon the responsible person to be aware of the fact that there are stupid, reckless people like these idiots in the video. And because of that, we should take extra precaution. It is incumbent upon the individual to take these extra precautions for themselves. But here's really where this boils down to. I think that liberty is frankly far too valuable to be sacrificed for the sake of security. But I can understand why people like this are scared of that principle. I mean, being as set in my ways and firm in my beliefs as I am, I look at that video and I have to ask myself some serious questions about that because there are people that are that stupid and that reckless. And I think probably the best way to describe this and to describe that sort of tug on your beliefs was described by Benjamin Franklin in this quote that he made at the Constitutional Convention in 1778, where he said, Only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become more corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. Now, essentially what Franklin is saying there, and is frankly very well illustrated by this news broadcast, this video that C uh, CBS News put together, is that when people are virtuous, there is no call for a shackle on the people and a lack of liberty to take place. There is no call for tyranny because there is no need perceived for it. But the less moral we become, the less virtuous we become, the less responsible we are ourselves, the more people are going to say, that idiot shouldn't be allowed to do that. And, you know, I understand that mentality and am sympathetic to it. I, I think that it's wrong. But at the same time, I, I get why people get there, especially after seeing something like that, where someone is so callous and so uncaring towards his fellow man that he will put having a good time ahead of the safety of other people. And watching that, I mean, it, it really does make it hard to argue for the fact that liberty is more valuable, but ultimately, it was our founders that saw it fit to give us this liberty. And that's why it is so important for us to realize that with liberty comes responsibility. Because if we fail to be responsible people with our freedoms, the cause will come to have them taken away. And the reason that we have gotten where we are in this country now is because we have not been responsible with our freedom. We have not done the things that we were supposed to do with them. And because of that, the calls for freedom to be curtailed have slowly eroded because of that. Because when it comes to things like giant government programs, welfare, so on and so forth, there would have never been any call for those things if the individual members of society, the churches, and the citizens were doing what they were supposed to be doing all along. There would be no reason for them to. And so because of that, we have to recognize if we want the government to do less, if we want more freedom, then we have to be more responsible with our liberty than ever before. These kinds of people are the reason people are afraid of freedom. And frankly, based on that, I understand that fear.
I still think liberty is more valuable than security, but I get where they're coming from. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances. <laughs>